வணக்கம் டுடே இன் பேங்க் ஆடிட் ஐ ஆம் கோயிங் டு டேக் அப் a very very important area that is the records and registers which you are have to do it we are to verify it during your statutory branch audit so it's only important records and registers i have mentioned this uh, program and if you want you can add any additional records and uh, uh, books for your uh, reference <laughs> so it's a very very important thing that you have to take note of it i am going uh, line by line and whatever all it is important i'll explain to you now what is the first thing that you have to see from the cash records what is the important uh, records and registers that you have to verify in cash one is vault cash register vault cash register is the register which contains the uh, stock of uh, cash inside the uh, inside the vault so you have to call for that register whenever you enter into the cabin uh, cash verification from that you can uh, take note of it the stock that is available at the stock of cash that is available at the bank next one is counter cash register because every counter has got uh, has got a cash register because uh, when you go and verify the counter cash you have to see call for the counter cash register that you can uh, verify the physical cash and uh, the cash closed balance at the counter cash should tally with the cash that has been kept in the vault cash register so that is also another important register that you have to verify and third one is atm cash register in atm cash register the money sent from the cash counter to the atm is recorded and the time of uh, taking the cash and when they have deposited the cash and is there any complaint in that uh, atm everything is properly recorded in that atm cash register so cash at the atm that is clearly you can see from the ca atm cash register this is the third one cash in transfer sometimes there are two types of cash in transfer one the branch is sending the cash to the chest branch other they have to make the record in the cash in transfer register it has to be properly signed by the officer who has taken the cash from the branch to the chest branch and sometimes the same branch uh, same banks other branches they need cash so this branch is sending cash to say other branch for that also it is properly recorded in that cash in transit register so that when they have taken the cash who has taken the cash everything has to be properly recorded in the cash in transit register this is another important register that you have to verify during your statutory branch audit next thing is chest branch register chest branch what is chest branch chest branch is normally in each and every district or depends on the banks so maximum branches they have their regional office or head office they have got a branch a chest branch wherein all the cash have, have been parked it is not having any public transaction it is having transaction only with the branches of the concerned banks so chest branch register you have to see if you are verifying the chest cash that is another register that you are key movement register what is key movement register key movement register is the register uh, where in all the transactions of the persons who are holding the keys are properly recorded because cash has to be joint custody and who is holding the key everything is clearly recorded in the key movement register so you have to verify the key movement register and you have to see whether all the persons who are holding the keys have been signed prop signed properly so if it is not signed properly then you have to cover that point in your report so next to register that you have to verify is key movement register <coughs> next one is cash balance certificate what is cash balance certificate that is every time whenever you are verifying the cash the bank they have to issue the certificate so that is properly recorded and uh, based on that only you have to cover that point in your report so cash balance certificate that is another cash register cash records that you have to verify and cash retention limit cash retention limit that means every day every day the what is the minimum what is the maximum balance that a branch can hold the cash at the branch level because based on this retention limit only the insurance cash insurance is being done by the head office so the if any excess is being noticed then the cash retention limit 
then that point you have to cover in your report. So cash retention limit is the other area of records that you have to verify. It. <coughs> then cash insurance register. So normally uh, when you go and ask for the cash insurance, managers they used to say that the insurance is done at the head office. We are not having any records about that. So if that is the case, you please receive a letter from the manager saying that uh, the insurance, cash insurance is done at the head office. Anyhow, as a matter of routine, you have to call for the cash insurance letter. That will definitely help you to give your comment because the cash, if anything goes wrong beyond the uh, insurance uh, level, then the bankers are at last. So you have to be very, very careful. So you have to see the cash insurance letter. Area that we are going to see is jewel loan records. What are the records that you have to see? Time of verification of jewels. Jewel loan applications. Whenever you are going for this, uh, what are the total quantity of uh, loans that has that have been sanctioned by the branch that you can take from the system? And that should tally with the opening application. So opening application means what is the stock of the application? So you have to ask for the live loan application plus you have to ask for the record of closed loan application. Why you are asking for the jewel loan closed application? That means whether the same borrower has received the jewels or not. Sometimes in some application, the jewels have been released even without getting the signature of the borrower. So this is clearly stated in the jewel loan closed application. So you have to verify the record of jewel loan application opening and as well as Closing. Then jewel loan stock register. What is jewel loan stock register? That is the jewel loans, jewel loan packages have been which have been kept inside the vault should be recorded in a register. And uh, the closing uh, quantity of mentioned in that register should be with the actual balance in the register. So the type of register is called as jewel loan stock register. You have to verify. The, that register and you have to do when you are doing the physical verification of jewel loan packets, then that should tally with the closing balance. Then tray wise stock, tray wise stock. So when you are going for the uh, inspection, so each and every Almira, uh, I mean, uh, they have got the tray. So for each and every tray, for each and every tray, you have got a bin card system. What is the total number of quantity that has been put in? What is the withdrawal? Everything is properly recorded. So tray-wise register will be there. So if we add a tray-wise register, the quantity should tally with the balance that is being stated in the jewel loan stock register. <coughs> so tray-wise stock register that you have to see. Next one is auction register. Suppose if the party, if he has not paid the amount, if the party has not paid the amount, then uh, that has to be uh, auction. So if, uh, if you are taking any jewels towards auction, that has to be recorded in the auction register. Then only the, those jewels should be auctioned. So what is, what is the total quantity that has been transferred from the live register to auction register? So you have to verify, you have to call for the auction register. If you go and see the auction register, what are the, how many times they have conducted the auction? And if there is any objection, everything is properly recorded in the auction register. Then to newspaper advertisement, suppose if the bank is going, the auction, then they have to give the placement in the newspaper. So for that, they are maintaining a separate register called newspaper advertisement register. When they have given the auction, uh, auction, when they have given the auction, and what are the matters that they are going to do it, everything do the auction, everything is properly recorded in the newspaper advertisement register. Next one is jewel loan. Uh, sorry, sir. Appraiser record. What is appraiser record? Appraiser record contains the appraiser appointment letter. What is the commission that they have to make the uh, payment? May make the payment to the appraiser. And over here it is said in the appraiser record you can clearly see who is paying the commission. Whether the commission is directly paid by the party to the appraiser or the bank is paid the appraiser commission. Everything is clearly recorded and. The appraisal appointment period also is clearly mentioned in that appointment uh, appraisal record. That for that you can use that appraisal record for your verification. Jewel scale records because you have to weigh the weigh the scale. We weigh the jewels, so that is a scale. So a scale has to be 
uh, when or the last me license once in a year. Every year you have to go and get the fresh license. So when they when you have gone for the license, whether the license period has expired or not, everything that you can see from the jewel scale records. So all this is all the seven are very very important. And the next one is securities record register. We are going for the securities record register. What are all called securities? It is fixed deposit assets, unissued fixed deposit assets. You are you have got uh, inside the vault. So that has to be clearly mentioned. The securities register and the demand draft, unissued demand draft, because uh, it is not possible for the bank to issue all the demand draft on the same day. So uh, they may issue some seventy used uh, demand drafts and remaining. Uh, maybe uh, 130 DDs, uh, unissued DDs will be there. So that has to be clearly mentioned. These uh, security stock register and travelers check. TC means travelers check. So that has also to be properly recorded in the securities uh, stock register. Then duplicate keys of the other branches and banks. What is a duplicate key? Because every uh, bank has got two keys. One key it is in normal rookie. Other uh, is called a duplicate key, it has to be kept at the other bank or at the other branches for that yeah, they have to produce the certificate and these certificate data should be properly recorded in the duplicate keys register and uh, when they have taken the, when they replace the duplicate keys and everything is properly recorded, say as per the norms, once in six months the bank has to change the duplicate keys because of a uh, warrantor. So if whether it is done or not, that for that verification, for that report, you can verify the duplicate keys, other, other banks' uh, records, because you can clearly see whether uh, the duplicate keys have been properly kept at the branch, other branch or not. Next one is there is balance confirmation other, from other banks. That means sometimes the banks, they maintain the account with other banks. So you have to get your letters, even there is a scope for fraud because they, if, uh, if the bankers, they are not produce a letter from other banks and uh, you can have to give that point in your report. This is because um, if the balance is confirmed, you have to get the correct balance. So it is an indirect confirmation that this bank is having balance with other banks. <coughs> for that, you have to get the letter issued by the other banks. And you have to do the reconciliation work. So, so there will be definitely there will be a difference between the uh, balance or confirmation given by the other banks and your bank. But here you have to bear in mind, you have to bear a point in mind that you are not supposed to do the reconciliation work. The reconciliation work has to be done by the branch and not by you. So reconciliation work sheet also you have to verify to get the balance confirmation. And this term outstanding unresponded for more than six months. In case uh, in the balance outstanding, if the entry is outstanding for more than six months, whether the head of whether the branch has informed us head office or not, that point you have to say. List of outstanding unresponded for more than three months. If uh, that is that, then you have to probe it. Otherwise, it there will be a chance to do the fraud. So this is this point you have to bear in mind. And the next area of records are. Investment records because sometimes the banks they are making deposits with the other bank either within India or outside India. If they, wherever they make the deposit, and the thing is, the branch has to get the confirmation from the controlling authorities that they have been permitted to make the deposits within India or outside India. Plus, they you have to they have to produce the deposit receipts for your kind of verification. It is clearly mentioned in that that is the date on which they made the deposit, what is the extent of the amount they made the deposit, what is the period of the loan, what is the period of investment, what is the amount of investment, and what is the deposit as in number. Everything is properly recorded in that investment register. As an auditor, you can ask for the investment records because this you can find if an entry is there in the balance sheet of the bank. So this is also another important record that you have to verify. Without verifying that, don't give the uh, clear report. Now we are going for the advances area. What are the important areas that you have to verify? That is proposal received register. Whenever, I come, whenever a borrower has submitted the application to the bank, they have to record in your register. That means the date of receipt of the application process, that is then the stages of uh, application, everything is properly recorded in that register. So you have to verify, you have to call for the proposal of received register. And next one is process note. Yes, 
before sanction of the loan, the bank they have to record all the process uh, whether this person has got the eligibility or not, whatever whether the uh, branch has received the KYC, <coughs> CSI, and civil. Everything is properly recorded in the process of register. This is another register that you have to verify while you are verifying advances. And uh, now. This loan sanction register. Now, after process note, if the manager is satisfied, if the party is within the norms of the bank, the manager can sanction the loan. In the sanction, the loan sanction, it, again, once again, all the column of one and two, it will be there when the proposal has come, when uh, who has scrutinized those application and uh, the data sanctioned by the manager and data for uh, the amount of the loan and whether the same is accepted by the borrower. Everything is properly recorded in this loan sanction register. Then the MODT register. Now the loan is sanctioned. Then the party has to go and record the registration uh, before the sub register about the mortgage, about the loan, or about the mortgage called as MODT. That is, MODT is called as memorandum of deposit of. So in Tamil Nadu, in Tamil Nadu, if MODT is not there, then no banker is eligible to go and get, find the case towards recovery. So, MOQ, I mean, the registration of MODT, it varies from state to state, but MODT register should be there, and you have to call for that register, whether the loan is being proper, before release of the loan, whether all the entries have been properly recorded in the MODT, whether proper registration, the MODT registration is being done by the party or not, that point you can see from the MODT register, then EM register. What is EM register? Equitable market register. So the thing is, it varies from four and five. MODT, for that, you have to go directly and register before the register. Here, EM register is the registration process which every bank, they are carrying out the loan registration. They are creating mortgage at their records. And this EM is valid for a period of 13 years. <clears throat> then this EM register, if you see all the loan documents which have been all the loan papers which have been kept, which have been surrendered by the party to the bank, has have been clearly mentioned in the EM register. So EM register should be there. One can ask, well, you see, if we are doing MODT, why we have to see the EM? Yes, even if that is the case, also the branch has to maintain EM register separately. Still, the bank they have not removed the concept of maintaining EM register. So EM register have to be verified by you. Next one, ask them to update all loan documents. So you can ask the uh, party to update all loan documents. What are all loan documents? That is all promos, all forms, everything have to be uh, signed by the borrower. And as on date, they have to update it. So everything have to be, everything has to be properly recorded. So you bank to produce all the updated loan documents for your claim verification. Loan files to be produced as and when asked. See, these are the another thing. There is a separate file called customer file. You can ask the <coughs> banker to produce the customer file for your reference. So from there you can have, you can take note of all the transaction of the party. If anything goes wrong, what are the communications? That the branch is having with the party, everything is properly recorded in that uh, loans register, loans file register. You have to ask for it and you have to one, only after doing this, a clear indication that uh, there, if there is any dispute that is clearly stated in the uh, loan. Only after that, only you have to come to the point, conclusion that the advance is, uh, is, advance area is being properly recorded. Then, what is stock register? A stock statement has to be submitted by the borrower to the bank uh, if they have held a cash credit loan, and it has to be done as per these uh, as per the terms and conditions mentioned in the sanction letter. In the stock register, what is the date of receipt of stock? What is the items they have put it, and what is the uh, uh, month they are paying? What is the total quantum of stock? Everything is properly recorded in this. Thereby, you can arrive at the drawing power. So, as a rule, as a rule, you must call for this. And there is another file called as stock forms register because the customer is submitting the forms, stock forms to the uh, to the bankers. The bankers they are maintaining a separate file. From there, you can easily verify what is the actual item of stocks that have been uh, disclosed by the party to the bank. In that, you have to see whether the 
items mentioned in the stock form tallies with the loan sanction. So tallies with the loan sanction. Uh, so suppose in case if the loan is given for the furniture business, if the stock of rice is being stated in the stock forms, you have to remove it. So you have to verify the stock forms file. Next item is inspection register. So if the manager on receipt of the stock on your stock uh, report, he has to go to the inspection either on a, uh, either every month or bi-monthly or quarterly or half-yearly or yearly. This is clearly mentioned in the sanction letter. So you have to call for the inspection registered towards stock verification. And next one is delegation power recycler. It's a delegation power because every every branch has been given the power to sanction, power to monitor their phones on their own. So for that, there is a separate circular called delegation power circular. You have to ask for the delegation power. The branch is being headed by scale two. The power of scale two is clearly mentioned in the uh, delegation power. So delegation power circular, you must ask for your reference. Then charge creation ledger, uh, charge creation register. Because you have to create the charge against the assets. This has to be created before register of uh, companies. This, for that, they are maintaining a separate uh, charge creation register. You want to call for it, whether the loan is being properly uh, registered before ROC or not. If, if it is not there, then you have to uh, cover that point in your report. So charge creation before ROC, that's a separate register. You have to ask for that register, then you have to verify. Another area of is legal notice sent to the register, legal notice sent by registrar. Suppose if the party is at default, then the bankers, they are sending legal notice to the borrower. So that has to be properly recorded in that uh, legal notice. What are the, what are the effect of legal notice, whether the party has responded to it or not, and whether the uh, legal notice is being sent as per the advice norms or not, that is clearly stated in the legal notice. Then suit file register. Suit file register are those registers wherein the case which has been filed before, case which has been filed before the court has to be clearly recorded in the suit file register. This suit file register, you have to call. Normally, we are not seeing the suit file register because, and even you can went further and to ask for the uh, reasons why uh, this suit file register is not uh, being updated because you have to get a clearance from the uh, advocate. So, suit file register, you have to verify. Next one is the NPA register. After conversion, after the after you converting standard asset into NPA, after the branch has classified those accounts are the NPA, it has to be clearly mentioned NPA and it has to be there is a separate register called NPA register that register you have to verify that will definitely help you what is the latest position of the NPA and another register is called as AOD and RL. AOD means acknowledgement of tick RL means revival letter it is nothing but uh, validity of the pronoun yeah DPN is valid for a period of three years and every before the end of the three year the branch has to once again update the the fresh uh, DPN it has to be it will clearly uh, mentioned in the uh, mentioned and termed as CAO, the economic market, and because before the end of the uh, DPN <coughs> period, <coughs> the branches to get the AOD. So from there, you have to uh, ca calculate and you have to see whether those loans are time bought or not. DPN register, DPN register is there whenever any fresh loan is being issued by the bank, and it has to be clearly mentioned in the uh, DPN register. Next is insurance register. Insurance register, whether they every year the bank they have to do the insurance. If it is a stock and data stock, the branch has to do the insurance every year. And if it is a missionary, it has to be clearly mentioned in the insurance. So you have to call for and verify the insurance register, whether all insurance policies are in order or not. And other others are last year MOC. Last year, in case if any MOC is then. It has to be clearly mentioned the last year MOC register. And this year, what are the MOC? MOC means no no changes. That is transferring the standard asset into uh, NPA. That has to be clearly mentioned in those registers. And DACGC, uh, that is, it is a claim made before the government. In case if there is any DACGC register, that also you have to verify what is the latest position, whether the banks they have claimed the uh, DACGC claim on uh, to the on uh, DAC claim as per the bank records or not that you have to verify. And ECGC, that is Export Credit Guarantee Corporation Register. If in case if there is any export uh, loan is being sanctioned by the uh, party, by the bank, 
then those uh, those things uh, you have to register before the uh, ECGC register and those things you have to verify whether ECGC claim is being made in case of default or not. That everything you can uh, 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 see from the register and the claim register. What are the claim register? In case if any claim is made being made before the insurance companies, if any claim is being made before the ECGC, everything will be clearly recorded in the claim register. You have to call for the claim register and you have to verify and satisfy yourself. And subsidy register, what, what are we called as subsidy register? If any subsidy is being given by the head office, by the government to the bank, then that has to be clearly uh, mentioned the subsidy register. In the subsidy register, you have to see whether it is a front-end subsidy or a back-end subsidy, everything has to be properly recorded in the subsidy register. So another record that you want to verify is subsidy register. And uh, next one is deposit lien register. Lien register. Suppose if any loan is being availed by the party on the basis of deposit, then that has to be clearly mentioned in the deposit lien register and guarantee register. Guarantee register in case the bank, if the bank has issued any guarantee uh, to the party, that has to be clearly uh, recorded. And in that, you can verify whether those uh, guarantees are in order or not, whether that it, has, if it is time bought or not, that you can see. And loan return of register. Sometimes uh, uh, if uh, the loan is being written off by the database, it has to be properly recorded. And those things uh, you can see from the uh, loan return register. And surface notice, in case if any, any loan uh, if, uh, has become the NPA, that uh, the buyer, bank, they have to issue surface notice. That has to be clearly mentioned the surface register. And another register is LC, letter of credit. In case the bank, the bank issuing the LC uh, to buy the material, it may be LC, maybe inland LC or ex, uh, ex, uh, import LC. Uh, for that, they are has to be clearly mentioned. If you call for all those registers, you can satisfy yourself, you can do it. So other register is uh, packing credit register and uh, other register or bill discount register. And all this uh, fraud register, that's a fraud, separate fraud register is not that has to be clearly seen CSI forms register that's a CSI forms register that also you have to see and the system maintenance register to verify the systems also you will get the uh, you have to maintain everything in the system and uh, disaster score bank register uh, that also you have to see because if there is any disaster score that you have to see and issue is not register you have to see and Stamps of register should be there, and that also you have to see. And petty cash register. So you have to see the stationary stock register. Even I, I want to go once again back uh, because uh, some registers have that. Once again, I want to see see packing credit register. So packing credit register clearly indicates what are the items that you have to see in the. Export order because a packing credit register, uh, you have to verify because all the packing loan will be sanctioned based on the uh, export orders available uh, with the party. The bank they are sanctioning the packing credit uh, loans, so everything the date of sanction and everything will be clearly uh, mentioned in the packing credit register and the bill discount register. What are the items that uh, after exporting the goods, the party has to make the discount with the bankers that has to be. Uh, clearly mentioned the discount register and fraud register. What are the fraud that have, that has been taken place during the year? That also clearly you have to see from the fraud register and CSI because as for the latest norms, even now they went further to state that you are you are not supposed to create the NPA if CSI is not registered. So CSI forms register also you have to see and system maintenance. <laughs> uh, so for how many period within how many period the systems have to be have been uh, maintained. The, those items have to be clearly mentioned in the system maintenance register and disastrous plan register. Suppose if anything goes wrong at the branch level, then that has to be clearly mentioned in the, that disastrous plan register and what are the items and who have taken care of and why the, the why there is a disaster that have been, uh, the disaster situation has taken place at the branch that you can see from the disastrous management register. Stationary stock register. So what is it told? Because head office normally they are sending stationary to the bank branches. The branches in turn they have to record everything in this stationary stock register and to whom they have issued everything that is clearly stated in this stationary stock register. And the stamp stock register you have to see because what is the stamp? That is the 
helps to check book, traveler's checks, uh, deposit receipts, pay order, gift checks, everything is uh, have to be included in this stamp stock register. And petty cash register, sometimes it is not possible for the ca cashier to spend uh, for each and every 10 rupees or 20, 20 rupees for that the branch is allotting 2,000 rupees and they are transferring the cash to the petty cashier and he is incurring the expenditure. So petty cash register also you have to see. Suspense account register. Suspense account register means sometimes the part the, the staff would have received some advance uh, at once, uh, sometimes a bank would have incurred some expenditure for that voucher has to come. Everything has to be properly kept, I mean, uh, return in the suspense account register. And if it is more than uh, six months, that also you have to cover in your point and you have to report it. You have to verify and call suspense register, suspense account register and sundry assets register. Sundry assets register also you have to verify. So in sundry assets register, all the amount that is due to the bank in suspense account, what the amount they are paying to the bank, but for the bank, they have to pay everything is clearly uh, recorded in that suspense account. So, sundry SS register, also you have to verify, you have to call for those registers and you have to verify because those registers are very, very important. Next one is bills payable register because what the, the bank pays some amount to the outsider that has to be clearly recorded in the bills payable and uh, in all uh, four and uh, Four, five, six, and seven. That is, Sunday deposit register. If the outstanding entry is more than three months, if it is not six months, it is, if it is outstanding entry is more than three months, you have to uh, go and verify the verify those details in depth. So these are the registers that you have to see. And uh, for other areas are <coughs> list of overdue deposits. Because you have a deposit if there is value for a one year and it has to be either renewed by the party or it has to be withdrawn by the party. If it is not there, then it has to be kept and in a separate uh, register called overdue deposit register. So you have to ask for the overdue deposit register. Then you have to verify whether the bank has communicated with the party uh, to come and renew it or come and get the money. So those details you can find from the overdue deposits. And the, this of inoperative accounts, sometimes if any account is not operative for more than two years, then the banks, uh, branches, they are transferring that amount to the inoperative accounts. And if any inoperative account has become live, then the party has to make a request to the manager and only the manager has got the power to authorize the money to be transferred from the inoperative to operative accounts. All those details you can find from the inoperative registers. Dormant account, what is dormant account? Inoperative is different, dormant is different. Dormant means there is no transaction at all in that account. So they are transferring, they can come it back, come, uh, they, they can make uh, that account as uh, operative. But dormant means there is no operation at all in that account. So those details you can find from the dormant account uh, register. And service charges apply. Every bank they are issuing the service charges. That record, based on that record only, the banks, they are branches, they are charging commission or collection charges or expense uh, that is income from the party. So you have to verify the service charges surplus. Next item that you have to see is you have to call for the uh, audit files of content audit, stock audit, revenue audit, RB inspection audit, RB inspection reports, everything where you have to call for. And based on that only, you have to come to any conclusion about the branch transactions. These are the things that you have to see. And the log report, log report is all system based. And who has logged on the computer, who has operated under whose password the account is being operated, that is clearly you can find from the log reports. Then interbank, uh, interbranch recognition, that means A branch is giving money to B branch, they have to do the interbranch recognition. Now it is being uh, done at the head office, but this has to be uh, done by the branch and you have to verify as an auditor, you have to verify the interbranch reconciliation statement. <laughs> Foreign exchange details, details. Sometimes you may be uh, buying the foreign exchange, you may be selling the foreign exchange, all those details you can find in foreign exchange details register. And clearing house, suppose if the party is sending the check for collection, those records you have to uh, mention the same in the clearing house. Clearing house means you now the concept of clearing house has gone. Only in a few areas, uh, clearing house are uh, there. And now, uh, uh, as for the latest thing, that is the you know, concept of clearing house. And uh, as a rule, you have to see, you have to, all, you have to verify 
the cleaning also inside in that you can see what are the checks that have been returned by the party what the step they have taken is there any case filed uh, before court of law and make the uh, that way make the branch as the witness so that you can see from the clearing house register and check return register every branch they have to maintain separately a check return register because the part the party is giving collect if the party is giving check for collection and those checks have to be sent for collection and those are those checks if the checks have not been honored then the party would have returned those checks to the party and all those details have to be properly recorded in the check return register and the self help group register because uh, as for the government policy the bank has to give loan to the self help group so how many groups the banks they are operating what are the details of the self help group everything will be clearly there at the uh, sg register these are the important register according to me this was the important register that you have to verify apart from that there are uh, so many uh, ledgers even so you you can uh, verify those registers with time bonds and if you need any uh, anything important you can call for the additional registers also and with this i am just uh, closing the today's presentation presentation on the records and registers that you have to verify during the course of audit all the best and good luck to you nandri vanakkam